I've always kind of liked the idea of having a punching bag at home and just getting your aggression out, and so I found that was my favorite part. So this is obviously not fitting you anymore. No? It's a little intimidating to have somebody come in and look through yeah. every piece of clothing that you have and give you a yes or no on it. So we're gonna put that into the no pile. You have an addiction to long skirts. Yeah. <laughs> Even my pastor's wife, she had to, used to tell me all the time, hem your skirt, Michelle, it's too long. I think we should probably ditch the long skirts. My yellow dress. I really did look at it through Kelsey's eyes and I thought, Oh, for heaven's sake, this is atrocious. I look like a big square yeah, okay. sponge. A giant rectangle, you know what yeah. I mean? Of course it'd be long in a no pile. The biggest issue in my mind is that some of the stuff out there for plus size women is not really fashion forward. Oh, that's really cute for the yeah. summer. Sometimes okay. it's hard to find things that are trendy and, and fashionable that are also plus size. I'm Kent Brown, the trainer for the participants of Fit First, a show about four people pursuing greater health through diet, exercise, and other life changes. For us, it's about the medicine wheel, the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual ways of life. Four. Most of it has been physical up until this point. We're five months in, and we're seeing if they're closer to their original weight goals since the beginning. I actually quit uh, stepping on a scale. I'm just basically going now by how I feel and how my clothes feel. And I'm fitting clothes that I wasn't fitting, so I know that I'm going down. I'm about eight pounds from getting reaching my goal right now. And we've got another month left, so I'm just gonna haul ass. I'm 154 now, and I started at 186, so that's about 30 pounds. But I'm okay with it now because I understand that I overestimated what I'd be able to do in terms of the physical part. I thought it would be a lot easier than it actually is. Um, you know, obviously going from changing your diet from being extremely unhealthy to going to being extremely healthy, it's really difficult. The participants are discovering that the challenges go beyond the body. They need to toughen their minds if they're going to stay on course. When I look at being on track, I feel pretty good from where I'm at because I keep up with my walking, I keep up with my exercising. I don't want to go back to where I was before. It feels for me that I've done what I normally do, which is I go hard for three or four months and then I just drop the ball. This typically happens you know, where I start to get into a slump and it's very hard to get out. You just have to be cautious of what foods you're putting in your body, but me, yeah, I love food, so it's, it's a really hard change for me. I know that the six months doesn't define the rest of my life. It's just a beginning point for me. I sort of struggled for a while when my weight plateaued. Anything that you survive makes you stronger, that old adage. That's what I find. This week on Fit First, we explore a dimension to wellness that forms a partnership with a participant's body, mind, and their spirit. We will walk with them on a spiritual journey, taking them further on the path they began five months ago. And through this, their struggles will be seen in a more spiritual light. There's a scripture that says that God will never give you anything that you can't handle. I lost every member of my family who meant anything to me. And when I would come to the park here and walk, I would walk and I would pray and I would cry. I was 13 when my father died, so 10 years we were together. And, you know, when I had lost him, it was like I lost my whole world, you know. And, and I would just cry because I didn't know what else to do. All of us, we all have a desire to be loved and to feel that you fit somewhere, eh, in the world. Walking is the best thing, I think, for me, because when I walk, I can pray, I can sing, I can do whatever I want. I was building up in, in strength in my body physically, but also I was overcoming. I was letting go of those things and, and just being here around the nature. Those are all healing things to me.
morning, ladies. Hello. Morning. Good morning. How you doing? Awesome. On this beautiful sunny day. Are you ready for uh, some medicine picking? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. I'm going to introduce you to a good friend of mine, a uh, spiritual caregiver, my teacher, Shane. So let's uh, head on in and uh, meet him. Shane, um, I've met him a few years ago. My good friend Shane. He's been you know, guiding my path. You look into that man's eyes and you see a lot of years of, of, of wisdom that a really old soul. Today we're going to be picking sage. Mother Earth is a spirit, not a resource. And uh, teach them that respect and relationship that they have to Mother Earth and to the medicine. They're there for us, but we have to have respect uh, what the Creator has given us. I wanted to uh, introduce you guys to two types of uh, sages today, the male and female sage. The first thing that I wanted to show you guys is um, the offering of, of the tobacco to the medicine. You want to ask these medicines that you're taking their life. It's like a prayer, you know. You offer a small prayer in your own way, however you do that. So this medicine here is called the female sage. This is for the, the females. With the male sage, which is this one here, when women are um, on their moon cycles, they don't use that one. But this one here is, is more for their usage around that time, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you pick it, don't pull the root out because you'll want it to regrow. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you're picking it, you know, just merely, merely uh, take it like that. The same for the male sage. Mother Earth is a living, breathing spirit, and uh, we want to respect what Mother Earth has to provide for us and the future generations. So, you know, these medicines like that, they're, they're there for us, but at the same time, we don't want to over-harvest the sites. I really appreciated it when he said, just take as much as you need. Don't go hog wild and pick, 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 and, you know, leave some for others. This matters to me because I don't want to see our traditional ways being abused. Over harvesting, look at these, how small they are. These shouldn't be touched for a few years. Let them grow. These are still youngsters. They're not even teenagers yet. <laughs> I know we talked about not taking more than we need, but I am going to actually take a little bit extra because I want to gift it to some people. This is my first time doing this, and I think it'd be nice to share it. This is what I want. I'm really glad that Jane taught us about the, the male and female, because I didn't realize there was female you know, medicine as well. So I'm really grateful for the experience. There's female sage right there. It's something that I've never done before, so it's really good to be out here on the land and you know finding out what it looks like. I never even knew there was such a thing as female sage. Now that I know, you know, where it is, I know proper protocol on how to pick now and stuff like that. So it definitely is something that I'm interested in. It's awesome, like I'm learning a lot of new things, so I'm really liking it. I find that doing things like picking medicine, yes, it may be simple, but it does take a lot of work. You're doing a lot of walking, you're doing a lot of searching, you're doing a lot of, you know, bending, standing up, that kind of thing. But you actually go and participate in it physically, you touch it. You have that spiritual connection, that feeling of it because you're praying for it, right? You understand, and those types of things you don't forget. When we take things from nature, we have to respect it. The word mataki oase, which it means all my relations. In that sense, uh, literally, we're connected to everything. So Shane, we'd really like to thank you for uh, showing us what you showed us today. It was really helpful information. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. So, thank you very much. Um, tomorrow we're going to be sweating. <laughs> you're going to feel the heat tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you guys tomorrow. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, very thank much. you. Okay. Women generally are the have the duty of um, tying lodged together like the ribs and the frame and so it was nice for us to actually take that duty on and uh, tie the lodge together. You're watching APTN. You guys ready for a good sweat today? Yeah. All right. 
Today we're going to be giving the participants an opportunity to build an actual sweat lodge uh, from scratch, giving them uh, an opportunity to participate in a sweat lodge, giving them a little bit of uh, information and knowledge. Our ancestors' uh, knowledge, we go back and rediscover, you know, the values that are inside our ceremonies and our teachings. I can tell you the wisdom and I can show you but part of that is also putting into practice into your daily life. I'm really excited. I just want to get to it. I've been to sweats before, and I really like them. I hope to learn more. Obviously, educate myself a little more about, you know, what our people do when um, creating these ceremonies, because I have no idea what sort of work goes into it. A friend of mine, Alvin Chartrand, is the lodge keeper of the site that we're going to be using. What we're going to be doing is we're, we're taking down the old lodge and then we're going to retire them to the fire. So everything comes back full circle, right? Comes from the ground, we put it back into the ground. Everything that we do in this way of life, whether it's making the fire or whether it's getting water, everything's a prayer. Everything that we do is a prayer. My husband, you know, we've been together now almost 25 years. One night I, I went with him to church. He asked me to come and I went and something just touched me. I didn't even know what it was, but something had touched me and I just wanted to cry. And I was thinking, why am I crying? Like, what's wrong, you know? But then later on, as I kept going, I started realizing that it was God. And that he was my father. Here I had no father now, and here was another father who created me and who loved me. I've known Michelle almost seven years. She has strong faith. She's really committed. And praise God, living for God, having him in our hearts, that's when we really enjoy life. You know, the thing about Mike is that I really love is that uh, when he preaches, he makes you feel that you can do things and that you can, you know, overcome things. He lets he preaches the word that way. Well, he's running the whole universe in galaxies and Milky Ways and just making sure everything's set in order. It's wonderful to think that beyond all of that, you and I are more important to him than anything else. It brings life into you, you know? The word itself brings life. So um, when we come together, we really, it, it's like a blending together of all of our spirits, and it's, it's so good. What I believe is really helping people like Michelle and the rest of the believers in our church is that we teach, you don't just learn to live with your weaknesses or your faults or failures. You believe that through God's strength, you can overcome these things. We live a resurrected life victorious. You can make it, you can do it. God's on your side. I don't ever push people, you know. I, I, they know how I am. I have a lot of friends that aren't Christians. I have a lot of friends that are in a culture. Um, you know, like, I just, I just live my life because everybody sees how you live. If you're living one way today and another way tomorrow, they're gonna see that also, you know? So you live what you believe. I think it's really important to have that balance, no matter what that spirituality is for you. You know, for Michelle, it's something else, and for, you know, our other three participants, it may be something different, too. I think that it's really important that we share this. Being Métis, I was kind of raised as a Catholic, just sort of in my early adulthood, sort of learning more about the Aboriginal ways. And spiritually, I found the Aboriginal traditional ways just more helpful to me. You know, like Shane was saying, we're not going to go back and live in teepees and, you know, go on the plains and chase buffalo and all that stuff. But what we can do is understand the way our people were, the way our ancestors were, how they thought about how they wanted us to be. Yep. Does it matter which willows go in which hole? Uh, no. I've never seen a sweat lodge built up from, you know, square one. Even the pit was rebuilt and it was moved over and stuff, so it was pretty much like a, you know, fresh new sweat lodge, so that was exciting. We need to identify the four doors, right? Erecting the uh, sweat lodge from scratch takes a lot of physical strength. Patience with yourself and with people around you, and you have to be working together as a team. We're just going to cut a strip like that. I have four colors, and we're going to use that to tie the, the frame. They're just four colors that I'm going to use for the four directions and the four people. So we're going to use yellow in the east and the south, black. We use red in the west and white in the north. Women generally are the 
have the duty of um, tying lodge together, like the ribs and the uh, frame. And so it was nice for us to actually take that duty on and uh, tie the lodge together. I've never seen a sweat lodge tied with cloth. I've only ever seen it twined together. So it was exciting to see, you know, all the colors around and knowing what they represented and stuff. I knew the colors and the four directions and stuff, but I didn't know, you know, that sweat lodges could look that pretty. <laughs> We built a solid enough structure that other people will get some spiritual healing out of it as well. So that makes me makes me very happy. It's already hot in here. Yeah. All right, my uh, my friends, ladies. Um, here's the physical piece. This is all of what we were talking about at the beginning, when it's just you don't just show up and everything's all hunky dory. Um, so we're gonna go over and we're gonna actually pile the wood, and uh, we'll make a conga line. We can start dancing if we want. <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. All right, uh, Jerry, you jump in when you feel ready to, okay? So, you know, uh, it's pretty darn hot. All right, it's boogie. Conga line. I think it's very important for them to test themselves physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. That, that's why it's important, is to bring that wheel into balance. I wanted to get that wood done as soon as possible. I want it done like bing, bang, boom, because I thought we had to do all of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I was taking like eight pieces of wood at a time and hauling over and noticing that that really wasn't good for me because I thought I was going to pass out when I was done. <laughs> I really believe the universe or the creator or whatever you want to call it um, takes care of things. And when you're on the right path, you know you are. The wind beneath my wings is God, and he's the one who lifts me. As time goes by, most people learn from their mistakes. The sweat lodge purifies the person, the mind, the body, the spirit. People refer to the stones as grandfathers because the stone people have been here for eons. And in our ceremonial ways, we refer to them as grandfathers because they come from the earth, deep inside the earth. The stone people resemble our grandpas, our grandmas, and we're bringing them back to help us to learn about the creator. The old people say that when we're gone, the stone people will still be here. So they're, in that respect, I guess more or less it symbolizes their eternity. Okay. I think that every day that I walk in my path, you know, I'm living out my culture. You know, I carry around my culture with me all the time, so it really does help me realize who I am and what a better person I can be. I really believe the universe or the creator, or whatever you want to call it, um, takes care of things. And when you're on the right path, you know you are. When you look at life, they're not superior to any other form of life. We all have to dwell in harmony. The significance of the sweat lodge is it's a purification rite. The sweat lodge is a place where a person goes to be reborn again. You know, when you've, when you've come through what I've come through in my life, it, it's... I don't lay down and give up, never. But that don't mean that those things don't hurt you or those things don't affect you. Praise God. God is my the wind beneath my wings is God, and he's the one who lifts me, and he's the one I pray to and ask for strength and to help me, you know? And the other person next to God is my husband because he has been my strength and he has been there for me through everything and he lifts me too. And sometimes I don't think he realized how much he means to me and how strong he is to me. Michelle just practices what she believes sincerely and that's just thrilling to a pastor. We share common ground that there is the creator. In fact, I hear a lot of the First Nations people talk about the creator. And and to know that life really can't be as it should be without knowing that he's there 
and is interested in us personally, not just on the job watching us, but is right there with us and wherever we go. I think in every religion there's a comparison. We're all striving to be better people. We're all striving to uh, get closer to the God that we're serving. Uh, we just did a sweat, four complete doors of a sweat, and a lodge that we built ourselves. And, uh, it's a beautiful thing. I look up to each and every one of those, those women that, that went in there and took part all day in this blistering sun to, uh, to uh, have that, in my opinion, that, that fighter mentality. I, I love it. The sweat was really good. I think I totally overexhausted myself doing the wood. Fortunately, I got out of carrying, piling wood. <laughs> You know, sometimes I get out of those things because I'm of my age. The energy in the lodge is, is always in the, in the end, it's, it's the great spirit. And uh, so it was, uh, you know, when you have positive energy, a, a positive frame of mind, and, you know, people going in with uh, good spirits, and it, 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 brings, it brings that good energy in the lodge. It was good today. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. This isn't the end of the journey for me. It's only the beginning because I, I really want to be healthy for the rest of my life. I believe in honesty, wisdom, humility, patience. Laughter. It is better to give than to receive. Next time on Blackstone.